Chapter 3, Section 3, Debugging with OpenOCD. In this section of the video series, we will introduce OpenOCD and how it can be used to debug your project's firmware on device. So with that, let's get started by reviewing the key points for this section of the video training series. So the first key point for this section of the video series is for users to understand what OpenOCD is and how it is used to debug Propel projects. The second point is to introduce users to some basic usage guidelines and tips that they should know before using OpenOCD. And finally, the last key point is to introduce single cable JTAG debugging. So with that said, let's dive into the first part of this video, where we will introduce OpenOCD. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Propel SDK yet, you may be wondering what OpenOCD is and what it might be used for. In short, OpenOCD stands for Open On-Chip Debugger, and it's a tool that is used to debug a software project on device using a standard JTAG communication interface. The usefulness of OpenOCD with Propel SDK is that it's integrated directly into Propel SDK's design environment, making it much easier to use and debug your code. Another thing that you should know about OpenOCD is that it also supports single cable JTAG debugging and allows Radiant users to use Reveal alongside OpenOCD. The usefulness of single cable JTAG debugging is that it allows you to capture and control signals from your Radiant project while simultaneously debugging your firmware using OpenOCD. With that said, let's quickly review some of the basic requirements for using OpenOCD, beginning with the software requirements. To ensure that your project is up to date, be sure to have the most recent versions of Radiant, Diamond, and Propel installed, otherwise there may be some features that are not yet supported in the version that you're using. Aside from that, Another one of the requirements is that your physical device must already be programmed with your SOC project's bitstream before you use OpenOCD, as OpenOCD cannot be used without a working design to test the firmware on. Finally, the last requirement is that you ensure your RISC-V CPU is set to debug mode, as this enables the JTAG help component that allows you to use OpenOCD. And finally, one last requirement that is not listed but should be implied is that you build your project frequently so that the code that you are testing is up to date. The reason for this is because the .elf file that is used to debug a project with OpenOCD is generated whenever you build your project. With that said, let's transition over to my desktop view so we can get a better idea for the general flow you might follow while using OpenOCD. As mentioned before, one of the requirements for using OpenOCD is that you've recently built your project, so you're testing the most updated version of your code. Once you've recompiled your project again, the next step is to select Run from the menu bar, then Debug Configurations from the drop-down list of options. From the pop-up window that appears, the next step is to locate the subsection called GDB Open OCD Debugging, then double-click the header. If you had a software project open from before, doing this will automatically populate some of the required fields for using Open OCD, such as the correct project, and c slash c++.elf application file that is used to test your firmware. Finally, the last settings that you will need to modify in order to use OpenOCD can be found in the CableCon tab. In this section of the OpenOCD setup window, we will need to scan our computer's USB connections in order to detect the correct device that we want to program. As mentioned earlier on during the video, one of the requirements for using OpenOCD is that our target device is already connected to our computer using a JTAG connection, and that our device is already programmed with a bitstream for our SOC project. Once this has been done, we can click Detect Cable and Scan Device in order to detect our device and select the correct port that it is located on. Finally, we should click Apply to save our changes, and then click Debug in order to begin debugging with OpenOCD. As OpenOCD loads, You'll probably notice that the console will output some red text. This is just the default text color for OpenOCD's messages and does not necessarily indicate that there was an error while running OpenOCD, so you should pay attention to this text and make sure that your project is running correctly. Once OpenOCD finishes loading, it will wait at the first breakpoint for your project, allowing you to set up some additional debugging views or breakpoints. The first of these views that we're going to quickly introduce is the terminal which can be used to set up various types of terminal connections in order to communicate with our SOC project via a serial terminal connection. Aside from the terminal, 
Another useful view is registers, which display the register contents in our SOC project at the current stage of our code's execution. Aside from that, another useful view is the peripherals tab, which can be used to select the components whose memory space we want to monitor in the memory tab at the bottom of the Propel SDK window. In this view, we can view the contents and addresses for all of the registers in our SOC project, this time grouped by the component that the register is a part of. Aside from that, one last thing that you should know about Propel SDK and OpenOCD is that you can also step over, step into, or even step return using these three icons in the menu bar in order to manage your code's execution and step between your code and breakpoints. That concludes this chapter of the video training series. To watch the next video in the series, select the video titled Section 4.1, Back and Flow with Diamond and Radiant.